urban environmentalists have long advocated riding bikes to work instead of driving on congested city streets. Cycling cuts down on traffic, pollution, and keeps you fit. One project at MIT's Sensible City Lab makes city bike riding even more attractive by using the energy you generate by pedaling to transform your bike into an electric hybrid that can boost you up Beacon Hill, collect data about pollution and traffic jams, and help you find your friends and deliver all that data to your iPhone. This striking white bicycle could change the way people commute, communicate, and the way cities are run on a day-to-day -day basis. It's all in the wheel. So tell me, why did you decide to reinvent the wheel? Well, we started looking at different reasons why people don't cycle. And one of the things that came up was that uh, people have certain limitations, whether it be health, or the distance they have to travel to get to work, maybe it's up a hill. And so we started to think about how can we change that and actually uh, make a bike more, you know, more available to everyone. So Jennifer Dunham and her team at MIT's Sensible City Lab came up not with a new bike, but a new wheel that turns a bicycle into an information gathering powerhouse. So actually, the interesting thing about this, uh, the Copenhagen wheel, is it's not actually just an electric bike, but it's an electric hub. We're actually giving people the potential to track um, where they're cycling in cities and then use this data from municipalities so that we can make a very clear statement about how many people are traveling on bicycles and how many people want to travel on bicycles. And then city municipalities can actually look at this data and see where they need to allocate their expenses so that maybe bike lanes need to be in places they hadn't previously thought of. So you've been talking about these bikes collecting data and connecting with each other. You use an iPhone to do this? So the wheel actually works um, with any smartphone. Uh, we've also made it to where you could just, there's a switch on the wheel, so you don't actually have to have a smartphone. But the power of the smartphone is that actually you can immediately see in real time the data that you're collecting. So inside our wheel we have a, sensor, uh, a variety of environmental sensors, we have GPS tracking, and you can get live updates about um, where you are in the city, what the status of the city is, where your friends are. How does it do this? How, do, how does it know where traffic is? Or how does it uh, analyze particulates? Everything talks these days, so we can actually get information everywhere. And through um, a smartphone, you can actually pull in all of this data, and then the bike can actually assess what kind of information you need. So it can see if you're approaching a potential traffic congestion and make suggestions. Maybe you want to reroute. Maybe you don't want to be next to all the car exhaust. So this bike can actually give you all of that information. If the Copenhagen wheel sounds like something you'd like to get your hands on, but you love your current bike or don't want to buy a whole new one, don't worry. So actually, the, uh, the interesting thing about this uh, Copenhagen wheel is that uh, we're not actually proposing an electric bike, but actually an electric wheel. So this makes it to where you can use your existing bike, and by just switching out the back wheel, you can completely transform your bike into a data collector, and then also it has a motor inside it. Um, and the way it works is actually through a torque sensor. So there's no on and off switch um, while you're pedaling. So what you do is you decide ahead of time how much energy you know, are you going to be using today. Maybe it's kind of a slow day for you, you want maximum power. Um, as soon as it senses you struggling, so when you start to really put a lot of it, uh, effort into the pedals, the motor kicks on and just kind of subtly adjusts your pedaling so that it's a little bit easier. Are these wheels at all like the devices that they have in stationary bikes and gyms. Maybe some uh, people at home are saying, oh yeah, I already put my iPod on my bike at the gym and track how, how far I've gone and, and uh, how many calories I've burned. Is, is it similar technology? We're definitely interested in that kind of technology. And one of the features of the bike actually is that there's different levels of motor assist that you can give. And then um, also there's the opposite of that. So you can actually set the bike to work against you. So maybe you're always on a fl very flat surface and you want to get a little bit of an exercise. So you can actually make the bike work against you. And so when you pedal, it kind of goes, you know, pushes against you. And so you really get a workout out of just a regular bike route. That's great. And tell me about the design. That's the part that you initially became involved with. Right, so the design was actually a really fun part of it because we wanted this to be, to be a statement. I mean, it's definitely something unusual to see on a bicycle, but we also wanted it to be very clearly integrated into bicycles. So we tried to make it as thin and slender and, you know, st streamlined as possible. Um, and a funny thing about it actually is that we had all this discussion about how we can make the shape really disappear on the bike. And then in kind of the 11th hour, there was a, there was a call and a decision to make it Ferrari red. Uh, which I was a bit hesitant about at first, but um, I think it turned out fabulous. It looks, you know, it's a very much a statement. Riding around in Cambridge, um, a lot of people, you know, turn heads, and it's a very fun thing to share and talk to people about. Yeah.